video recording of Jayco Greyhawk 30Z. I'm going to start at the front. I'm going to work my way around and then go inside, uh, pointing things out as I go along, uh, explaining what how things work and what they do. I'm going to start at the front here, always under the hood. Not a whole lot we can do under the hood. Just a few things I can show you. Mostly because we don't work on the engine here. I like the fact we have a battery up front. It's not under the driver's seat. And we have that problem in some of the Mercedes. Washer fluid, easy access. Everybody uses that. Oil, uh, 5W30. You're going to want to do your oil changes according to your manual inside the coach. It does have a few things here tell you what you need transmission dipstick right next to that always check your transmission when the engines running air filter power steering fluid brake fluid coolant here's a fun one not that you can get in there I can see it a little bit on the screen. There it is. Oil dipstick. Not the easiest thing to do, especially when you're supposed to check your oil when it's cool or warm. Just like any other car or older car, you still have <clears throat> the kickstand here. It folds down, clips into that. always like the look of the front, Ford front end. <clears throat> Air tire pressure. PSA on this one is going to be 80 pounds per square inch on each tire. They're not always the easiest. The front ones are easier than the rear ones and sometimes you have to remove the hubcaps on the rear. Cab. I'll cover a couple things real quick here. Oh, only a few things. Windows, door locks, mirrors. The top mirrors are, he are heated and power. Heated is there. Power here. Just the top mirrors. The bottom mirrors are manual. That's going to be both left and right. Because I won't be able to get to it later. There is an emergency start button here. So you have your engine chassis. <clears throat> you have your battery for the chassis. For that, if you ever run it dead because you're running the stereo too long or you leave the ignition on, you can still jump start the engine from your battery, your coach battery. Pretty simple. Just push it and hold it, wait a couple seconds, and you turn the ignition. All right, generator compartment. <clears throat> generator can be run going down the road. In fact, I suggest it, especially if you want your air conditioner to run. On hot days, your chassis air conditioner just will not keep up with it. How to open the generator to do any maintenance or service or start it uh, from outside. Take those off. Just little clips that spin. Make that easier. Ooh, hey, look. All right, inside the generator here compartment, you're going to want to do your oil changes periodically throughout the life of your coach. One big thing you want to do is the first oil change at 50 hours, 5-0. After that, it's about 150 to 200 hours. Uh, explanations to that are in your manuals as well. You'll be able to check on that. One of the big things you can do is start here as well as stop. I always suggest you stop and prime. Let's see if I can get that to focus stop and prime stop and prime you'll see the light come on you'll hear a little pump going it means you're gonna you're moving fuel from the gas in case you ever run your gas below a uh, quarter tank one of the really big ones here I get a lot of phone calls on there is a breaker switch here Ford the way it is right now is on and now it is off 
we want to make sure that's on. If it's not on, generator will run all day, but never send power to your coach. To check your oil. I don't know if I need that. Check your oil. Unscrew that. It's just its own dipstick. This is also where you add the oil. To drain the oils underneath, it's a torque spit that's under there. Uh, once you see it, you'll know what you're looking at if you're doing your own oil change. Or you can bring it anywhere that will do an oil change with these. Also want to check your air filter periodically, um, at least twice a year. Make sure there's not a lot of debris in that. The compartment doors on the generator. The back one is a thumb lock. Push it in twist front one is the key compartment right behind that pretty simple a little dirty right now haven't had the cleaning ladies into it yet decent size fit a couple cases of beer in there also a different lock than the generator It'll be a different key. <clears throat> okay. Compartment right behind that is for your power cord. Right now I'm plugged into 30 or 50 amp down to 30 amp. You can do that at a park if you needed to. The cord for this is about 30 feet long, between 28 and 30 feet long. There is one 10 outlet, so if you want to plug in an extension cord for like a leaf blower or coffee pot or something like that, you can, as well as cable in. What the cable in will do is allow you to have cable at a park, plug it into this, and have cable to your TVs. Right now, I have the cord spooled up and then running out the side of the door here, but there is a compartment door underneath. You can run your power cord or extension cord or anything else through that so you can close and lock this door. Just behind the compartment door with your power cord, there is a low point drain. This is for your freshwater tank. Basically, a couple things on this one. So you can use it to drain your water or, which has a little bit of antifreeze in it now, which is good. You can drain the water, or if your dog needs a drink, or you just want to get a quick drink or wash your hands a little bit, this is perfect for that, as well as drain your tank. Then compartment door right below, behind it, pretty decent size. All right, we'll go back to the back tire. This is a hubcap. It looks like your wheel chuck is there, and then there's going to be one directly across from it. Uh, there it is. Not the easiest to get to. A lot of times you have to remove the hubcap. Uh, small pry bar works, and then a little uh, dead blow to put it back on, which is all right. <clears throat> Behind that, we have here on leather fuel only. You don't have to get premium in it. It doesn't require it. Um, feel free to just put regular unleaded in it. You won't have any issues with that. All right, just below, above the fuel tank, you have city water connection and a black tank flush. The black tank flush is on the left side. It says caution. Make sure the flush valve is open when you're filling, basically filling with water. It's an upside down sprinkler that basically just sprays the walls of your black tank. Helps clean out any extra solid debris or toilet paper that might stick, stick to the walls. City water connection, pretty simple. Basically just plug it in to your hose and with pressure, turn it on and you'll have water to the inside. 
just above that we have it says shower on it that will use your see if I can get it, it says uh, CH751 not that I can really see it on that outside shower in case you know dog decides rolling the mud you don't want to bring them inside yes rinse them off a little bit or yourself it doesn't matter or in case you empty the black tank and you get a little bit of poo on you we don't really want that perfect place to do it instead of bring it inside hot and cold so it's pretty nice Okay, so left side, black holding tank, which is a black handle. It looks kind of gray in this video, but it is black. Right side is gray, and it definitely looks gray. Make sure those are closed. If you're running your black tank flush, you want to make sure the black tank is open and you're dumping into designated spot. I also suggest dumping that in your yard. But I guess if you want to, I can't stop you. All right, container right before, compartment right before that, or behind that. We have a little bit of light. I'm gonna go all the way in first and then come back out. This is gonna be your whole house filter. Basically, you put your filter on inside of that. There is no filter in it right now, but that's okay. There is one inside. Then we have basically uh, uh, valves to turn those off so you don't actually have to run through the filter if you don't want to. All right, let's do the fun stuff. I don't know if I want the light on or off. Let's turn it off. All right, we have two valves here. This is gonna determine what your hose does when you're plugged into it. If you have your hose hooked into the city water there, oh, basically right next to the black tank flush, or if you're going to fill your tank, if you're going to have pressure, if you're going to winterize, basically those two valves are deciding what you're going to do. Now, it seems complicated, it's not don't overthink it it's really simple so if you're hooked into city water and you you're hooked up at a campground this is perfect it's already set to two and six so two and six one two three four five six two and six is what it's already at a city filled tank basically you're gonna fill your fresh water tank with pressure from uh, even the campground or your home then country fill, one and four, that's basically using the same place you're plugged into. It uses your pump and sucks in from a, a water source that's not uh, pressurized. So if you have, if you collect your own rainwater, stuff like that, you can do it. If you're in a really pinch, you can pull from a lake. I don't really suggest that. Uh, normal, three and five, is going to be normal. It's pulling from your your fresh water tank. So after you filled it, you turn it to that so you can actually go down the road, use the restroom, wash your hands, um, take a shower if you wanted to. Or if you're just dry camping. Sanitize and winterize lines. Same concept as uh, country fill where you take the hose, you put it into um, antifreeze and then suck it in from there open up all your faucets. Uh, there are a lot of good YouTube videos on how to winterize. <clears throat> Sanitized tank, basically it's just like country fill. It's pulling from a hose that's attached to the side of the coach and you can use uh, a lot of times bleach water, uh, just a couple caps of bleach to a five gallon bucket and then fill your whole tank. It would, it would basically kill any of the bacteria that is inside that tank. Okay, back side of your coach. You have a rear slide out with a slide out awning on it. 
LED lights everywhere. I like that. You have seven way plug for your hitch as well as a four way. Seven way and four ways just below it. So if you have a small trailer you're more than welcome to tow with it. This hitch is compatible up to 7,500 pounds towing capacity, 750 pound tongue weight. Now that is by the tow bar itself. I would highly go with your GVRW on that one. I wouldn't go by what the hitch itself is going to be able capable of. Compartment. It's a fun one. Nice size. Uh, I find that a lot of people like to overfill these, which is okay. Try not to put too many spare tires in it. And then on center of this light, there is a camera for reverse. It works really well. It is not adjustable. You can't adjust which way it is directed, but it's actually got a nice middle ground right now where you can almost see the hitch and you can definitely see behind you a little bit. All right, going behind our other side of the coach, a big compartment just from the other ones we've just looked at. Another light on this side. And then we have your starter kit. The starter kit basically makes it so you can go camping, leave here. We get a lot of people that come from California, Alaska, um, some from Canada, uh, basically all over our country as well. What it comes with is a 25 foot safe drinking hose, a water pressure regulator. A lot of people like to just to buy those. Um, they end up returning them because we give you a free one. Four rolls of RV marine toilet paper. You can't go wrong there and actually I suggest that. Scott brand is the softest. They sell that basically anywhere. I know Amazon sells it. <clears throat> Camco's nice. It still feels a little sandpapery. 10 foot sewage hose so you can just empty if you want. 15 drop-ins for your black tank. Basically what those are going to do is break down the solids, help with deodorization. Uh, how you use them is you take a five gallon bucket, fill with about four, four and a half gallons of water, drop one of them in, let it dilute, and then pour it down your toilet. The reason being is you want a little more water in your black tank. And then a 30 amp down to 15 amp adapter basically makes it so you can plug into your home. You don't have to worry about um, anything uh, restrictions. The only restrictions with that you'll have to worry about is you cannot run air conditioner with it. If you need to run your air conditioner you're plugged into 110, your normal household plug, you want to run your generator. Compartment in front of that it's just basically storage, low point drain as well. It says it on it. Where the low point drain is on it is on the left side. That's going to be for hot and cold. One, one's going to be hot, one's going to be cold. I don't know which one they are right now. It really wouldn't matter because you're just trying to turn or empty any excess water that's in the system. Below that, we have a quick connect for a propane so if you have an external grill or something propane grill that you want to use um, griddle or anything basically you can plug into that and you don't have to hook in or bring other tanks with you because that hook goes right into your propane tank already exhaust eh, it gets hot don't put your leg on it outside speakers uh, will be controlled from your stereo inside and then there's a switch next to the door which I'll explain a little later then you have your awning awning rails nice size again tires 80 psi I know I already said that and then another compartment here which is just in front of the tire is going to offer 110 outlets as well as cable uh, outlet as well 
So the cable outlet there is going to allow you to hook, hook up a TV outside here in case you want to get up and watch your morning news and have coffee next to the fire. Water heater, fun one. You will want to empty the water heater anytime you're leaving it alone for short storage, even a week or two. Open the door, see if I can get this thing to focus fun. Not really. All right. The one, the plug there has blue, uh, blue mark on it. That is going to be a plug for that. That's going to allow you to drain your whole water heater. This one is six gallons. We want to empty that every time we're done camping. Stagnant water is one of the worst smelling things I have ever smelled in a motorhome, including versus the black tank. And when you're done draining it, just leave the plug out, just put it in there. Uh, make sure you plug it before you start running water through it again. Then, right above that, we have the fridge. I'm gonna open this, not for any other reason, to show you that you can, and that you want to get in here and clean out any debris that may be in here. I'd probably clean out the debris once, twice a year. If you find yourself needing less, then do it less. Right to the right of the water heater, you have your furnace. Basically, it's your exhaust and your air intake here. It says it's hot. Don't touch it. I know I just did, but I know it hasn't been on. If you know it hasn't been on, feel free. But general rule of thumb, it says hot. It's probably hot. Compartment next to it is going to be your propane. There is no lock on propane. It is illegal to have a lock on propane. Right now, it says it's at three quarters of a tank, just a little over, near full. That actually is full. We cannot fill a propane tank all the way 100% because you need a way for the, the liquid to boil off. So you need that extra space in there. Turn it all the way on or all the way off, never in between. Just like your propane with your grill at home, uh, to fill it, the only thing you need to know is that you fill it from this spot. You can't remove it. It has to be removed or filled by someone uh, licensed or trained in how to fill the tank. The fill port is right above it. But again, you're going to pull in anywhere and you're going to be like, hey, I need this filled. They're either going to say they can or they cannot because that some people are only... Uh, prepared to do uh, tanks that you'd have on your grill. A lot of U-Haul you can fill it through this and there are other places all, all through the country that you can fill motorhomes. Another speaker. Another compartment. Two year limited warranty. That's pretty good warranty. Side cameras on both mirrors. So when you turn on your blinker, you'll be able to see your blind spot. That is awesome to have. Also, before I end the first video, we have a power step. Almost every motorhome has a power step. That is going to be controlled by your door. And not the main door either. It's always the screen door. There's going to be a switch just inside, or not quite just inside. It says power step on. Let's turn that off. Now it'll stay out all the time. In case you're a little tired, you're waking up, you haven't had your coffee yet, and you had a little too many cocktails last night, you don't want to just go face first in the ground. Leave it on or off. And then I will stop this video here and I will create another video for the interior.